Welcome back to Crist Mining and today we are taking a look at the most efficient miner in existence. Nope, not this big one. We are talking about the Futurebit Moonlander 2 USB miner. I wanted to do this video for some time now, but since the latest Windows update, many people have problems with their Moonlanders and drivers. So I wanted to do it rather sooner than later. If you're only here for the fix, there's a timestamp in the description. Time is crypto. So this little machine offers 3 to 5 mega hash per second on the script algorithm by only using 1 to 3 watts, depending on your clock settings. The prices have been jacked up a lot, but if you can get hold of one cheaply, I'd say go for it. The reason why I love this machine is that no big brand name is attached to it, so no Antminer, no Baikal, but a product by a nerd like we are. Also, these things give everyone a chance to mine and for me, decentralization, besides maximizing your coins, is one of the reasons for mining in the first place. So I'm saying all of this while watching Bitmain dumping L3 pluses for insanely low prices for the recent weeks. So please be careful. I'd rather argue for the Moonlander as the perfect learning device to set up your first bat files, experiment with pools and maybe find an unknown script coin to test some solo mining. What you'll need is a well-made and powered USB hub. Otherwise you won't be able to tweak the settings too much. Normally a 3.0 hub is recommended, but my second Moonlander is on a USB.2 hub. <laughs> the very same USB hub which held my old Bitcoin block corruptor, so the, all the memories. This hub works well for the modest clock settings I'll be showing you later. Also, this is no standalone unit. That means you either need a PC running or a small solution like a Raspberry Pi. My computer is running 24-7 anyway, firstly because of staking and secondly because I'm mining with it too when I'm not working, so the Moonlanders have found their places left and right of me. Now I want to show you what you'll need in order to start mining with the Moonlander. All links shown will also be in the description for you. If you already know the channel, you know I'll be working with Windows, but the setup is very similar. You just have to choose drivers and minor versions for the operating system of your choice. First, we need the drivers by Silicon Labs, and here is where the problem with the new Windows update comes in. Suddenly, people's Moonlanders were not recognized anymore and the driver wants to be reinstalled. But reinstalling is not the solution. We have to go on Silicon Labs website and choose the legacy version of the drivers. This means an older version, the 6.7.5 version. So This allows our device manager to recognize the little things again. Next, it's the mining software itself and for the Moonlander, BFG Miner is the easiest. So now we'll have to set the BFG Miner up. We create a bat file and then edit it to give it our info so that it knows where to connect to and who's getting paid. So with the bat file you start the mining software then, not with the executable of the miner. So here you can see my settings and you see that I chose Litecoin pool, but this process is the same for any script project. And you could also solo mine with this little SIG as well, but for projects like Litecoin you'll practically never find a block on your own. Also, this bat file is where we can choose the frequency the miner runs on. So this is the software side of the overclock. There are two different ways to overclock the Moonlander. The simple one is to do it with software, which I'll show you in a second. Other possibility is to do it on the machine itself and here you can see the little screws you'll need to change in order to change voltages. Since I'm only using a normal PC USB slot and the other in a USB.2 hub, I'm only overclocking with the software side of things now. We are doing this by going back to our bat file and take a look at the frequency setting. The stock frequency of the Moonlander is 600. And on the screen you can now see a list of available frequencies, but I realized that much over 648 will result in a lot of hardware errors and bad shares with my setup. So with the clock setting pumped up to 636, we're getting around 3.6 megahashes per second, which is fine for me. That's already it for this week. I wanted to give you an introduction of this little machine as well as a basic setup guide and my thoughts. I hope you liked this video. If you're thinking of getting a Moonlander, please tell me in the comments. Have a nice week and bye!